So here's my first question. Is this an argument or something else? It's an, it's an explanation. What does it explain? The state of movie theater. The, the state, okay, so it does tell us about movie theaters, right? Does anyone see any argument here? Yeah? I mean, I feel like they're kind of claiming that based on this statistic, the film and industry overall evidently is prospering. Yeah, that itself is a conclusion, right? Yeah. And so there is, for something to be an argument, you need a piece of evidence and you need a conclusion. And this person starts out by saying, hey, look, receipts have gone up 40% over last year over the previous year. It's like, oh, that's great. They're making more money, right, in movie theaters. And it's like, thus, the film industry overall is evidently prospering. I was like, whoa, that's a serious leap in logic, right? Because we're talking about movie theaters, and now we're talking about the film industry overall. It's bad, 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 right? So normally, this I would take this to be an argument. But then... It ends with like, oh, uh, yeah, by the way, uh, twice as many movie theaters went bankrupt last year as in the preceding two years combined. If that sentence had come first, it would be considered a concession, and this would be an argument. It, because it's coming last, after the conclusion, it's clearly some afterthought that the person is like, oh, there's a conundrum, right? So you can bet... Lots of money that they're going to now ask you to resolve that conundrum. And when and here they do. Which one of the following is true? Most helps to resolve the apparent discrepancy in the information above. This is an explanation question or resolve the paradox question, whatever you want to call it. What you're trying to do is help explain how these two facts could coexist. You can actually ignore the conclusion because that's not the fact at issue. The fact at issue is the fact that receipts went up 40%, yet twice as many movie theaters went bankrupt. So we'd have to say, well, how is that possible? How could money go up, yet twice as many movie theaters go bankrupt? Can you predict an answer? Can you explain why some would go bank bankrupt? Even though, yeah. Um, the first thing I thought of was the economies of scale, probably that larger theaters are able to thrive while smaller ones are. Sure, larger ones are able to thrive while mom and pop theaters are going the way of the dinosaur. All right, we have one over there in Fairfax. Oh. <laughs> it's great to feel sympathy. But it's a very dirty theater. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how it's going to survive. But, um, I mean, there's no difference, right? You just show up. Anyways, so, um, okay. So, I'm looking for something that says, look, yeah, here's why some failed and here's why some succeeded. Okay? Now, uh, A, films cost on average twice as much to produce today as they did 10 years ago. Why is this irrelevant? Irrelevant. The production costs have nothing to do with movie theaters. Yeah, we don't care about production costs when it comes to movie theaters, right? Unless they're producing their own movies. B, ticket prices at some theaters fell last year. Could this help explain why some went bankrupt and others succeeded? Yeah. On some level, yes. But who said no? Let's talk about it. It was the key. <laughs> Like, if, so think about it for a second, right? So twice as many went bankrupt. Maybe they went bankrupt because their ticket prices fell. They cut them in half. What would that make people? Come more? Yeah, maybe. maybe. Maybe they're just, like, charging less, and they have the same number of visitors, and they're like, this place is still dirty. <laughs> <laughs> and it could. Now, it's not a great explanation, and there's a huge problem with it. I mean, one, you say, hey, what happens when you drop the price? Does that actually save your company? Maybe it does, right? Your theater. But there's another problem. Do you guys see the problem? Some. Some means what? More than one, maybe. Some. More than one, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't actually mean more than one. You know? Yeah? Does it mean, like, not the majority? It does not mean not the majority. So if I say that some of you um, like ice cream... Do you guys think that that claim is probably true? Yeah. Could it be true that most of you like ice cream as well? <coughs> yeah. So, like, even though most of you probably do, it's okay for me to say that some of you do because that's true. Some, you're very close, by the way. Some just means at least one. So, even though it sounds plural, like if I say some of you, that technically just means at least one. So, whenever I see some on the test, I'm going to replace it with the phrase at least one. Because it makes, it makes it so much more obvious how weak this is, right? It's like, ticket prices at least one theater fell last year. 
Like, oh, cry me a river, right? That one mom and pop shop, they should have dropped their prices anyway. Um, in any case, my guess is that's not going to be the answer. But you do want to be aware of the fact that it does help explain on some level because in the harder explanation questions and harder questions in general, right, all the answers suck and one does a little, it like, does something. And you're like, yeah, okay, fine. That helps, because it says, which I find most helps to resolve, even if it, they could add on here, even if it doesn't help to resolve very much at all. Right, because it's more than the others. So, B is probably gone. But C, those of last year's films that were successful were very profitable films that were shown by exclusive engagement at only a selection of the largest theaters. Well, that kind of goes along with your prediction. Um, yeah, basically some theaters had access to the successful films, some theaters did not. That could explain why profits went up and some went bankrupt. Right? You're looking for an answer that explains both of the facts, not just one. Um, that's actually kind of why B is also problematic. B doesn't talk about why they might have made more money, right? You guys cool with that? So we're looking for something that goes in between and explains both facts, not just one. D, the amount of money spent on film advertising increased greatly last year over the year before. That could explain why profits have gone up. And the majority of this expense was absorbed by the producers and the distributors of films, not by the theater owners. That doesn't explain why they went bankrupt. That just explains why they made more money, right? So that's out. E, in general, an increase in the theater's box office receipts for any year is accompanied by an increase in that theater's profits from snack food and soft drink sales for the year. Uh, okay, that would explain why they made more money. It wouldn't explain why people went bankrupt, right? So the answer is definitely C, even though it's a little strange. Um, are we okay with that? Yes? Sorry, so in all the resolved paradox questions, the answer is going to be one that re resolves both. Like, it's going to address both. It's going to, it's going to thread time. the needle. It's going to go through and help you understand okay. why both of these facts can coexist. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, uh, if, if all these answers were the opposite, they made the paradox worse, or they didn't do anything at all, they're like, Santa likes chocolate, you'd be like, hmm. I mean, some answers are like that, you know, and then sometimes we laugh about it in class and someone's like, well, I, I, I picked that one. And <laughs> we're like, oh, okay, well, why do you think Santa's relevant here? But um, in any case, it's possible that <clears throat> we find an answer that's just really horrible but still better than the other. So maybe it doesn't explain both. But in the vast majority of cases for an explanation question, it's going to help you understand why these two things could coexist, so it's going to address both of them. Yeah. And stronger language is better, because if you're going to do something that most helps to resolve or explain, then words like some just don't cut it. And while we're on the subject, some means at least one. Uh, the word many sounds strong, but it's subjective. Right? Like, if I told you that many of my friends came to my birthday party last year, <laughs> you wouldn't know <laughs> how many people that is, right? You might be like, well, okay. He has ten friends, first of all, I know that. And um, maybe two came, because for me, that's a lot. You know, usually they don't show up. <laughs> but there's so many. I'll go, we got another awe. <laughs> Mom and pop shop spends life... Okay, um, in any case, 